Chapter 5 The Christ Within by Lillian de Waters. How do we apply the Christ message to the healing of sickness, lack, fear, and trouble? In faith, we assert our freedom, our deliverance, our inheritance in His name. We know the truth of Christ in us, and this truth is our deliverer. The Spirit of God, the indwelling Christ, cannot be sick, cannot be afraid, cannot be hurt, cannot be troubled. And this is the truth that we know. We appropriate the all good here and now. Hath he not spoken, and shall he not make good? We are perfect now in God's sight, in Christ, reality. And this is why we claim our inheritance in His name, keeping our eyes fixed on unseen verities until they become seen and felt. We do well to let ourselves be keyed to celestial glories, to self-existent heights, and to let the fadeless wholeness in us shine forth in all its radiance and glory. A new knowing is fast falling over the earth. A new language is being heard and spoken. New books glorifying God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost will sweep like wildfire from east to west and from pole to pole, encircling the whole earth. These are the latter days, wherein Christ is becoming universally recognized as the Lord of this planet, and as the life within every soul. Ever and always God is the Father, the Supreme I Am. The predicateless one, indescribable as root, but seen, known and understood, as Jesus Christ heard and felt as the Holy Ghost or Comforter. Unless we are accepting Jesus Christ as God, the One, we are not seeing Him as He is. As we accept the work that Jesus did for us, we are no longer a living soul, but have within us the quickening Spirit. Thus, instead of being mortals, or children of men, we are now the sons of God. Jesus said of his disciples, they are not of this world, meaning that no longer were they children of this world, but through rebirth, or birth into spirit, they had become the children of the highest, children of the perfect land. Many will ask, but how can I understand these things? How can I hear the voice and receive the revelation? The Spirit of Truth in you will reveal truth to you if you will meditate upon Jesus as God, the I Am. If while meditating upon these deep things of life, the answers seem not to come to you immediately, do not mentally grapple with them, but calmly and quietly lay them aside with the certainty and faith that soon they will become clear to you, and in a few days, or perhaps hours, the explanation will appear to you, laid out in all its simplicity and clearness, causing you to feel that you had always known it. This is revelation, or being God-taught. Only the infinite invisible knows what man is. The original self of each is the angel of his presence, is the king self. Let us practice looking to this perfect model, and surely we shall see the manifestation in our bodies and in all our affairs. From Genesis to Revelation, we find Jesus glorified. As early as the third chapter of Genesis, we read, and the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. In Genesis, the beginning, we find perfect man, paradise, peace, joy, and happiness. 
in Revelation, the end, we find the city of our God, the perfect land, and great multitudes singing, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. If one has not advanced beyond the physical plane of living, naturally he interprets the Bible from his viewpoint, and he sees Jesus as a good man, and observes that he healed a man of blindness by placing some dirt upon his eyes, that Timothy said, Use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, that Isaiah told Hezekiah to take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster over the boil. The man who has advanced out of the physical plane into a higher or mental outlook observes that Jesus was not only a good man, but that he also had a wonderful mind, and understood the laws of nature so well that he could walk on the water, that he, through the power of his mind, could direct his thought to the sick mind of another, so that his sickly thoughts would give place to healthy thoughts. Yea, so great was his understanding of mind, say some teachers, that on the cross he knew how to withdraw his own mind from his body, making his body appear lifeless to onlookers, though he himself was conscious of all that was taking place. There are those who look still higher than these ideas, however, and who see Jesus not only as a good man, not only as one with great understanding of mind and right thought, but who see Jesus as the Word made flesh, and who understand him to be even as he said, the way, the truth, the life, the resurrection, the Alpha and Omega. As the intellect is stilled, and the heart crieth out for the living God, so does this living God make himself known to the individual heart. Those interpreting the Bible from their human viewpoint see Jesus good and wonderful. Those interpreting Jesus from a higher view see Jesus as an example, teacher, way-shower, one steeped in the pleasures of sin finds no peace or delight in the atmosphere of heavenly joys. No one steeped in the pleasure of intellectual wrestlings with the mental law of mental cause and effect and the metaphysical training of the power of thought cannot appreciate or encompass the higher joys of laborless activity. Right here, let the reader be fully familiar with the difference between mental healing and spiritual or divine healing. Mental healing uses the power in the individual mentality with which to heal, saying that the individual mentality is God. Mental healing is a process of thought, wherein the healer sends from his own mind thoughts of health, strength, power, peace to the mind of another who has called upon him for help, or in the case of self-healing wherein the individual would help himself. These thoughts of the healer have birth or origin in his individual mentality, and as the river can rise no higher than its source, so one's idea of what is right and true, treatment, can rise no higher than his own viewpoint. Spiritual or divine healing is not based on the healer, nor the patient, nor the mentality of either, nor is it based on any mental cause or mental effect of that cause. Spiritual healing is based on Christ and reality. It lifts the vision from the mind, from the thoughts, from the self, to the great I Am, and it bases all its declarations on truth, on reality and the finished perfection of God and man. Spiritual healing is not based on any method or any system of any individual on earth, but it is founded on Jesus Christ himself and his teaching. Any books based on the Bible that point away from the self to Christ, truth, are based on the rock against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. It is the personal I that speaking says, I am sick, 
I am weak, I am troubled. Not so speaketh the true self, the Son of the Highest, who ever crieth, I am truth, I am life, I am resurrection, I have overcome the world, I have led captivity captive. Be not deceived, admonishes this free spirit. Judge not according to appearances. Salute no man. Believe no lie on the way. Look unto me, the unspoilable, the unkillable, the victor, the king. No man taketh life from me. It is finished. Therefore is not all good, everything needful at hand, waiting our recognition? Are not the green pastures forever at our side? Is not the tree of life and the river of living water ever at our command? Go thy way. Thy son liveth, said the Christ. Did he see the son sick? Let down thy nets and draw up the fishes. Did he see any lack? Lazarus, come forth. Did he see Lazarus dead? Lo, I am with thee always. Did he see any place or space where he could not be? With a kiss did Judas betray his Lord. Are you speaking reverently and gladly of Christ, while you say and think that Jesus was but an individual such as you and I working out his own salvation? Think of it. Jesus the Word made flesh, the King of all heaven and earth working out his salvation. He who made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Philippians 2, 9 Can you conceive how he who came down from heaven could be working out his own salvation? Can you comprehend how he who mastered wind, wave, sin, sickness, death, could be a mere man such as we? Think well of that kiss with which Judas betrayed his Lord. With weightless body did Jesus step upon the waves and pass through the closed doors. With untutored mind did he speak the word that brought sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. With vibrant sternness did he whip with cutting words the self-righteous and the hypocrites who would obstruct his message. With tenderest love and sublimest grace did he welcome the penitent, the sick, the suffering, those who felt their need of him. Jesus, the name standing for miracles, for life more abundant, for immortality, for deliverance, for heavenly wholeness, for supernal greatness. Jesus, more than a teacher, more than a way-shower, more than a brother, more than an example, more than a human concept, more than a mere man. All hail the power of Jesus' name. His name is the Word of God. His name is I am that I am. Are you recognizing Christ and misunderstanding Jesus? Are you trying to gain heaven, reality, understanding of life by some means and by some avenue other than by the one door, Jesus Christ? A spiritual man of today writes, He who separates Jesus Christ into halves will be himself divided. All that we are is made from our thoughts, speaks a voice from the thought plane. How rejoicing that this is not true in the God plane. It is true only to those who look at appearances. Were men in reality only that which his thoughts make him, how very little some men would be. But spiritually man is greater than even his greatest thought could conceive. So great is that power of glory and majesty within him that even with his most reasonable thought he never could conceive of such greatness. To himself, man may seem to be even as he thinks. 
the true self ever knows and understands. A great unseen, imperishable world is within and above this world of time and space. Only high watch gives us glimpses of this world of infinite dimensions, a world in which the fields are forever white to harvest, a world wherein the desert blossoms as the rose, a world wherein green pastures are ever before us, and our cup of joy runneth over. Who is looking towards this world of delight and describing its manifest glories? Who is viewing this heaven at hand? Who is rejoicing in the heavenly music heard in the quiet of meditation and high watch? Who is seeing the light that is brighter than the sun? Who is hearing words of indescribable comfort, joy, and peace? Who is feeling the baptism of the Spirit? If we would be God-taught, then we must look to the great mind. Said the newborn Peter, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none on earth that I desire besides thee. Looking to the miracle worker brings the miracles to us. Looking to the sickness of your friend may bring that sickness to you. Look to the self, uncontaminated, unharmed. Spiritual science is not the science of right thought. Spiritual science is the science of right vision. The vision that sees the finisher and the finished kingdom. The vision that manifests in right thinking and right acting. That thou seest, that thou beest. The land that thou seest to thee will I give it, is his promise. To be charged to overflow with irresistible miracle working while yet manifest in the flesh. To be the radiance of buoyant joy while walking among the sons of men. To shed perfume of healing and strengthening and illuminating while yet speaking with us and smiling upon us. This is the final Christian ministry. This is the bloom of full obedience to the sacred edict look unto me there is no disease where the healing name is called there is no inadequacy or failure while the spirit of god is in the nostrils in breathed as the only breath this is living truth thus speaks the pen of a great writer what can the mind bring forth without a vision nothing no matter how frail you may seem, no matter how boisterous appear the waves beneath your feet, no matter how sure you feel that you are sinking, awake and take hold of the hand of omnipotence and abundant life. Lay hold with resistless vision upon the high deliverer and his kingdom at hand, your inheritance. The avenue called right thought is a good and right avenue and has brought great good into many lives and is a step that many find advantageous in rising from the physical to the spiritual. However, let the student be aware that his vision is of greater importance even than his right thought, for it is vision that determines thinking. You do not think first, you vision first, and then your thought follows your vision. Also let the student take care that he fall not into the error of calling himself God, for the personal self is never God. Take right thought and use it, as is un intended, the way of an avenue, a means, a modus operandi. Let the student also be watchful that he use not his intellect to such an extent that he become cold and unloving, self-righteous and unsympathetic. The mental healer says, change your mind. This is good and right, but there is a still greater change that you must make in order to understand and appreciate the spirit world, the heavenly things. The spiritual healer says, ye must be born again, 
and with the process of new birth the birth in you of the king self will come the attending right thoughts and right conditions on the first plane the body may be fed with drugs on the next plane the mind may be fed with thoughts but on the supernal or heavenly plane the individual feeds upon christ the rock the fullness of god i am the lord that healeth thee is the voice that he hears is anything too hard for me who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases let the real christ impersonal be known and acknowledged as jesus christ the self in every breast submit thyself to god and be at peace is the high command by looking to the supernal presence within and about above and below as all brings down the miracle and makes earth and heaven one thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven the bible is more than a piece of history more than words written by men according to their own understanding more than some pages of literature more than some problems in mental mathematics the bible is called the revelation of god to man a contract between god and man god hath fulfilled his part it remaineth for man to fulfill his as man needs a mathematical mind to comprehend figures as man needs a telescope to gain acquaintance with the stars so man needs a spiritual sense in order to comprehend spiritual things one does not approach mathematics through his understanding of music neither should he attempt to approach the unseen plane the realm of spirit through an avenue other than the spiritual faculty of soul all books except the bible in time decrease in sales but ever the bible increases in circulation marching on and on in spite of all opposition the theme of the bible is this ye must be born again this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent it is as we are reborn that we find the bible easy of understanding to such a one it needs no key for the interpreter of the bible is the living christ the compass of the bible is constantly pointing due north to the pivotal character the self above all other selves the self triumphant there is a key to the scriptures the key to the scriptures is jesus christ jesus christ is no longer walking on earth as a man but as spirit he is with us always this is the cosmic christ everywhere present ye are complete in him we are complete in him though he the spirit of truth does not come in until we look and behold him until we open the door until we become aware of his reality and presence christ liveth in me declaring the knowing paul anyone who can recognize the difference between music and noise should be able to recognize the difference between look unto me the indwelling christ and be ye healed the spiritual message from the high plane and i am god and all power is in my own right thought the message from the mental plane anyone who can appreciate the difference between heavenly things and earthly things should also be aware of the line of demarcation between be clothed with me be filled with me until you have lost yourself in myself until you going on from glory to glory awake in my likeness and the message god is all there is and as i am someone then i must be god we do not waken to find ourself god but we do waken to find god all there is a very old story told of two birds one glorious and majestic resting serene and content in the top of the tree the other restless noisy and discontented springing from branch to branch below the vision of the lower bird was constantly kept to that of the glorious creature above him he envied him he mocked him 
he was angry at him. He loved and worshipped him alternately, and ever and anon, though he knew it not. Closer and closer, he drew to the perfect model above him. He watched his complacency, his majestic unconcern and abandon. He listened to his music of enchantment and brilliancy, and he longed to be that bird. Little by little, with attention fastened to the bird above, he found himself rising higher and higher, and more wonderful and marvelous seemed the glorious creature to him. He might yet get acquainted with him, though how different was his colorings, his ability, his song, his thoughts, in fact, himself, from this heavenly being in the top of the tree. But what was his surprise, soon to find, that the bird in the branches below had gone, vanished, and there he sat alone in the top of the tree, the very glorious creature of his ideal. Meditation will reveal to you the deep significance of the lesson of the birds, the real and the unreal, the spiritual and the mortal. The unreal is not the real. The false is not the true, but the real and the true is all. To empty oneself means to unclothe oneself of all self. We cannot pour more into an already filled bottle. There is a great gulf fixed between talking about Christ and preaching Jesus Christ. Had Peter preached about Jesus, he never would have touched three thousand people with one sermon, and some of these very ones had crucified the Master. Think of the great difference between talking about food and eating food. Does a thirsty man want to be told about water? How clear and cool and sparkling it looks? Does a hungry man find satisfaction in listening to an oration about the various tastes and properties of delightful foods? If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, announced Jesus. I am the living bread. I am the water of life. Let us watch to see if we are talking about this living bread, or if we are actually giving this bread and this water to the hungry and the thirsty hearts. If we talk about Jesus, saying that he was a man of that period, good and wonderful, of course, but that he is not here now, having gone to a higher plane about two thousand years ago, is this feeding the hungry with the living Christ? To talk about Jesus arouses a desire such as the longing for food to the hungry, but to feed upon the living bread, to feel the presence, to hear the voice, to recognize the touch, is not this far greater? To preach about Christ is not as wonderful an experience as to feel Christ. To talk about God is not as satisfying and illuminating as to talk to God. The following is a quote from E.C.H. Jesus Christ is not to be relegated to the cross or to the hereafter. He is within the soul of every human being. And there is where he is to be worshipped and adored. Jesus Christ, according to Peter, is that hidden man in the heart, that mystical being, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ must be understood and lifted up out of the realm of moral beliefs, with its many heated arguments, and take his place in the great plan of man's salvation and redemption. He is not our elder brother, nor is he a good man that lived some 1900 years ago. He is the great I am that I am, the God in the soul of every man, woman, and child the new age where his presence and power will be practiced by every soul is about to be ushered in the true knowledge of jesus christ is beginning to flood this earth as the waters flood the sea 
all due to the fact that the Lord of this planet is pouring out his spirit upon all humanity. The truth of Jesus Christ is the one thing that will unite man to God, for no man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the conclusion of chapter 5 of The Christ Within by Lillian's Waters. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.